Hello, my name is Trevor. I'm a teacher at International House Bielsko Biała, and here are my tips for being an English student. So, what's my number one tip for learning English more successfully? Movies. I think if you have a Netflix account, you're halfway there. Um, I think it's watching movies in English, and you can have subtitles in your, your native language as well, but I think watching movies is a fantastic, holistic even, way of being constantly engaged with the language. And considering this wealth of Hollywood and, and English movies you have to choose from, I think you have a lot of kind of work to do as far as catching up on the whole uh, list of movies that you've seen already. You know, you've seen all these Disney movies, but now you can watch them in their original language and begin to understand. And that's something that's really magical, I think, when you see something in the original language and, and you actually understand it. It's really a powerful, a powerful emotion. Okay, and grammar, learning English grammar. Pray a lot, uh, go to sleep early, and, and what else? Chris, do you have any ideas? Because I don't really. Um, as a native speaker, my grammatical know-how is probably much lower than some of my students, to be honest with you, and though I, I speak flawless English all the time. Um, there was a really scary moment for me when I was taking my CELTA course, which is a teacher training course, uh, which was in Italy. And I'm with these Italian teachers, and they're talking about the third conditional. The third conditional. Oh, these students know the third conditional. And uh, Does anybody have any tips for teaching the third conditional? And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, what is the third conditional? What exactly is this? Should I be here right now? Am I fit to be in a room with these Italian English teachers or should I just pack my bags and go home? And that has been one of the more difficult aspects of my first year teaching English is basically, I don't know. I feel like I can, I can drive the car but I don't know how the engine works. And so now I'm teaching myself how the engine works. And so, if we're going over a grammar point, I probably just learned it that morning as well. So we'll do it together and like I said, pray a lot because we'll all need it. So my favorite English word, it would have to be knight, like a medieval knight with armor and a sword and shield and everything else because I really like the origin of the word. So in medieval English, it was something like knit, and in Anglo-Saxon or Old English, it was something like uh, knit again. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. But the original Anglo-Saxon word meant something similar to boy or servant. And as you know, a knight is, is really a, a minor lord, right? This very high figure. But initially the word meant servant, that these were the servants of the king. Um, theoretically, he was calling them boy, you know, go do this, go do that. And I don't know, I really like that one of the more aristocratic and higher words in the, the English language started out as being kind of almost derogatory, but in a sweet, caring way and then evolved to mean something that's very, I don't know, intimidating and, and heroic. But it makes me think of uh, the Japanese word samurai, which as we all know from the movie, The Last Samurai, means to serve. So I like that little connection. Anyway, remember, like, subscribe. You, nobody can see it now, but Chris Walker is holding a small caliber pistol behind the camera and uh, I have to do my duty. I have to serve. <laughs>